This double-O gauge Hornby signal has been modified to be operated by a servo motor. The servo motor is controlled by our bouncing semaphore controller. An on-off switch switches the signal between danger and clear. The servo motor and bouncing semaphore controller can be used with other types of signals such as ratio kits, MSE kits and with other scales. Just to show how the servo arm and the signal arm move together. The servo arm is mounted in one of our brackets which is just screwed to the underside of the baseboard. This is our bouncing semaphore controller. The lead from the servo motor is just a push fit in for a connector. The bouncing semaphore controller is powered by 12 volts DC. The connections are made to this terminal block. The positive from the power supply goes into this terminal the negative to the middle terminal. The on off switch uses this terminal and this terminal. So the middle terminal is shared by the negative from the 12 volts DC and one of the wires from the on off switch. It doesn't matter which way around the two wires from the on off switch are. Just to show the connections to the on off switch, this is its underside. One wire goes to the outer terminal and one wire goes to the centre terminal. As semaphore signals are controlled by a cable from the signal box, you'll find as a general rule, the further the signal is away from the signal box, the more it will bounce due to slacking the cable. The bouncing semaphore controller has a number of controls to adjust how the arm behaves when it bounces. All these controls are push buttons. The first two push buttons are to adjust the danger and clear position of the semaphore arm. They work in the same way as our single and dual servo controllers. If we, that's lowering the arm, that's raising it a little bit higher. Once you've got the position you want, you throw the switch and it remembers that position. The next push button is the raise speed, how quickly the arm goes up. It cycles through, each time you press it, the arm gets a little bit faster. Eventually you should get back to a very slow speed. That's back to the slow speed. The next button along is how quickly the arm goes down. Again, you will eventually get back to a very slow speed. The fifth button long is the amount of bounce you get on the signal arm. Again, every time you press it you get more bounce until you get the minimum amount of bounce. back to the minimum amount of bounce. The final button we call the overshoot. When the signalman pulls in his lever it has to have a little rest in the middle so the lever goes up and then drops down a little bit. Again this is adjustable and you can eliminate it. Okay, you can just see it falling back a little bit. getting bigger a 
think that's eliminated the division. Now we'll keep increasing it if we press it some more. The final thing to mention is the LEDs. They have a number of flashes depending on where in the cycle you are. The modification that I needed to make to the signal was to run a piece of wire down to the servo motor below. To do this I drilled a 0.8mm hole in the balance weight arm and I drilled a hole of about one and a half millimeters in the signal base. Signal base is made out of some die cast metal um, but it was easily drilled with a drill bit in a Dremel drill. I started it off with a pin vise so I got the hole in the right place. In the balance arm, which also seems to be metal, I drilled all the way through with a pin vise. Here's the wire running through the baseboard into the centre of the arm. The reason that it's not at the end of the arm is because then the servo arm would only move through a small angle to give the movement. Having it nearer the centre means that the angle that it moves through to move the signal arm is bigger and this gives more accuracy in everything.